In every field of study, there are going to be research questions that depend on getting the most recent information and updates about your topic. Without the latest facts and figures, any report or essay that you write on that kind of topic will be obviously incomplete and incorrect. That's why it's important that you be aware of the age of the information sources that you use. If something doesn't have a publication, copyright, or last updated date, you can't rely on it. Even in history, being aware of the latest news on your topic is important. Above and beyond the needs of your particular research question, each academic discipline has its own standards for the currency or timeliness of information. In the sciences, new information often makes old information completely obsolete rather than just adding to it. Just from a practical standpoint, think about the rapid pace of discovery. For research in the sciences, try to pick information sources published in the past two years. Some of them can be three or even five years old if the information in them hasn't been superseded by new findings yet, but two years is a safe bet. In the social sciences, like the sciences, newer information is better than older. Your information sources should mostly be published within the past five years. An information source in the humanities never truly goes out of date because even if it doesn't have a complete picture of the facts, its insights might still be useful. But you can't use just older sources. You want some of them to be from the last three or five years, just like in the social sciences. Like I said before, no matter how old the oldest resource you're using, you still need to also use the newest ones so that you're not missing out on the latest information or stuck in an out-of-date worldview. When you're using an older information source, you need to think about the time and place that produced it, and how those factors could have an impact on the content and how that content is presented. Current events create intellectual trends, like how right now there's a quantum physics metaphor for everything. Also, it takes a while for academia to catch up with the various liberation movements, so even the kinds of information sources that are supposed to be objective usually show the prejudices of the time and place that produced them. Scholarly writing is an ongoing conversation, and you're having that conversation with the people who are researching and writing now and in the near future. So you can be informed by and talk about older information sources, but you really need to engage with the current ones. I said you can be informed by and talk about older information sources, but which of the older ones are worth bringing into your research? There are so many of them. It's important to focus on the older books and articles that really had an impact on all the subsequent research, and those are called seminal works. They're the articles and books that get taught in courses and that everyone cites as authorities. Your professor will know who the important authors are. If you aren't in a position to ask them, you can ask a librarian for help figuring out the influential figures that you should be paying attention to. Finally, one thing to remember is that different topics come into fashion and others go out of fashion. Sometimes research reaches a dead end and won't get started again until someone comes in with fresh ideas or a new technology. Sometimes a foundational theory or methodology is shown to be incorrect and brings research to a halt. Sometimes it's just that there aren't any grants for research in that area. A lot of it really does come down to money. And sometimes the well just runs dry. It seems like everything there is to discover and figure out has already been discovered and figured out. So there are legitimate reasons why there might not be any current articles about your topic. But just to be on the safe side, ask a librarian for help searching if you run into that situation.